My topic today is what is the nature of spiritual unity. You know, we are important people. Yes, important people. God has chosen us. We, we are so special, and people look at us and have a community and associate certain expectations with us. But question what I have, or questions even, what makes us special? What makes us special? What sets us apart from today's diversity that we have in this world? Fishing community, Shelton's community, um, um, drifting community, yes, and some other, other communities that we have in our world, if you will check, you will find a lot of. Maybe we are, we are special because we are handsome. Yeah, maybe we are smarter, maybe intellectual, stronger, healthier. Maybe we are distinguished by the fact that we study at our Sabbath school, maybe in university. Perhaps we know how to build the strongest relationships, and that makes us special. Or what makes us special, my dear friends? Maybe that we belong to church organization. You know, the answer for this question is not buried somewhere deep in the reaches of biblical truth. It is on the surface. This is a base or basis of the Christian faith. We can see uh, answer especially in uh, Paul's epistles. Yes, and all the epistles are penetrated with an idea and a concept that theological, theologians briefly call in Christ. Paul perfectly presents, or per, Paul perfectly presents, I can say, the fact or the concept, this idea in Christ in his epistles, because this idea is a basis or foundation of his theology. And like what we have, if you will open book of Romans, book of Corinthians, Ephesians, you will find some, some expressions. In Christ, yes, life in Christ, unity in Christ, abiding in Christ, building in Christ, struggling in Christ, united in Christ, with Christ, in Christ. And uh, true Christ, yeah, we have a lot of these expressions, and this is a foundation of Paul's theology and I believe uh, New Testament theology that we have. And I can open, and today I have a couple Bible verses that I would like to read with you Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 4 and 5. It will be our first Bible verse that we will read today. And. I would like to read it, uh, read it with you and show some, some uh, moments here. Okay, verse 4. For us, in one, for as in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in what? In who? In Jesus Christ. And individually, members one of another. This is an interesting expression. And I will talk about it um, uh, soon. But this is an interesting idea. In Christ, we are members one of another. This is really important. Okay, one more Bible verse I would like to read with you. Second Corinthians, we will read chapter 12. Uh, not second, first Corinthians, sorry. Chapter 12, and we will read um, three verses from here. To verse 12. For just as a body in one, and has many members, and all members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. Why, why, why? Okay, and one, 26, 27 we have. 
If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice. How? Together, yes? Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Yeah, I have one more Bible verse in Galatians, but I cannot find, uh, I don't have maybe in my presentations, but I would like to read it with you. 3, 26, 28, what we have, uh, Galatians. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither the, is neither slave nor, nor free. There is no male and female, nor for you are all one in Christ Jesus. As you see, main idea or main exp like expressions that everything, how? In Jesus Christ. All these texts are united by one theme. Only in Christ do we become a community, a special kind of community. The church of God on earth is the body of Jesus Christ. Christ community means, means unity through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. From brief encounters to many years of daily fellowship, we belong to each other exclusively through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus we do come together as a family. We quarrel and argue, but only thanks to Christ, these conflicts cease to exist. He becomes a mediator between us and God and between us in our relationship as a church family. Christ is the mediator between us. Without Christ, we do not know God and we do not know our brother. This is my message today because this is what I see is really important for our unity, my friends. Just in Jesus Christ, we have that unity. Reason why we are together because we are in Jesus Christ. Not because I like Dean. Maybe I like him as a person, yes? But he is my brother, first of all, in Jesus Christ. I don't like you, but we are brothers in Jesus Christ. And that helps me, what? To go through my don't likeness, yes? to all my obstacles in our personal relationships. If uh, we will just use our human feelings and preference, we will never be family. Just in Jesus Christ. I got and found this interesting quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was theologian uh, during, before Second World War, and during Second World War, and he, uh, he was killed uh, in 1945, one month before World War was done. He was uh, real, real, he has interesting books, but my sermon today is a little bit inspired by his books, Living Together. If you will find this book, simple book, but very powerful ideas there. If you like it, Find and find living together. But one quote I have for you today from his book. Christianity means community through Jesus Christ and, Jesus, and in Jesus Christ. No Christian community is more or less than this. Whether it is a brief single encounter or the daily fellowship of year, years. Christian community is only this. We belong to one another only through and in Jesus Christ. You know, my friends, I hope it was not a revelation to you, but why today, what we see today, 
and what I see and why I would like to focus on this. What we see in our community or in our uh, contemporary world, we can see that the emphasis in our re relationships uh, is more on the human unity between each other rather than the spiritual unity of our community. You know, reason why we talk about that, because we have a lot of seminar programs that helps us, you know, to build team, to build a team, yes? To build relationship, to solve conflicts. And we are using these methods, some tactics, uh, techniques, and that helps us really, or if I need, if I know that that person irritates me, what I need to do? I need to keep distance, yes? I know how our psychology and our coaches, modern, they will teach you how to do that. And okay, I can live with that person for years at church because I keep what? Distance. That helps me to save my uh, inner world. And this is from, I, I, I don't want to say that this is wrong. I can say that today we have more accents on this. And we build our relationship more on this foundation than try to pray with each other. If I have problem with somebody, my first reaction what? Close my eyes and forget about that person. Yes? If I have a problem, it's really hard for me to come and say, listen, we need to pray first of all. And in our relationships, I would like to have just that foundation, spiritual relationship. <sighs> Contemporary churches show how we Christians more move away from spiritual unity, which is the basis of the concepts, concept being in Christ. And it is this spiritual unity is what makes us special and unique, my friends. If we, when we are using just this uh, um, psycho trainings, yes, we are as the same, if you will, if you will, for example, I took classes as a real estater, re real, uh, real, real estate, yes? I took classes, techniques that they show you, or ethics that they, show you and teach you, same as you will go to business, some other business. For example, you will work for dealership. When I work for dealership, same ideas, yes? You need to have this ethic, you need to build a distance, you know how to answer, and all of that really, really similar, depends on situation. But, and some churches today are using that system and what is the problem? We are not unique with that. Our uniqueness just in our relationship with God. And through God, we, are, we as a family really became unique. It was different, different, differentiates us from the rest of the world. And that, what may, what is, that is what unites us in Jesus Christ. So... What is the difference between the spiritual and human reality? Because Christian community is founded solely on uh, just on Christ, it is spiritual and not psychic, uh, psychic reality. And this it differ, differs absolutely from all other communities. The scripture called pneumatic or spiritual, that which is created only by the Holy Spirit. Yes? Who puts Christ into our hearts as a Lord and Savior. The scripture term psychic, human, that which comes from the nature, urges, powers, and capacities of the human spirit. Spiritual reality is focused on Christ, on his world, and his word. A person realizes that the success of the church 
is not in his ideas, dreams, desires, ambitions, but in joint unity in Christ, who is the foundation of our church, which is the center, the head of the church. The basis of, church, of spiritual unity is this truth. While the basis of human unity is desire, my friend. Desire to control. Yes? Desire to what? To read your intentions. Desire to keep under my authority. The spiritual community is the community of those called by Christ. And human community is made of pure souls. In the spiritual community, the word, word of God rules. And the man submits to the word of God. In the spiritual, the word of God binds people, but in the human community, it binds a person to himself or him, herself. In the spiritual community, all power and strength is given to the Holy Spirit. Spirit, while in the human community they seek power and spheres of influence or of a person nature. In one, the Holy Spirit rules. In the other, psychic techniques and methods rule. In one, there is naive love that helps a brother and service to others. In the other, selfish motivation and intentions use the other person. It cannot be said that there is no love in human community, yes? There is. But it is different love. If you remember the book of first um, letter to Corinthians, chapter 13, what Paul says. Remember, and if I give away all my possessions and give my body to be buried, but I do not have love, then there is no use for me in that. Paul says, this is something different. You can even, you, you can even willingness to, to have sacrifice in your life, but this is not God's love. This is human love, loves another for his own sake. But spiritual love loves a person for the sake of Jesus Christ. After all, it is Christ who creates true love. Human love seeks direct contact with others. It loves him outside of freedom. Instead, instead it binds him to it, strives to win, conquers it, might it, press the other, strives to be irres irresistible to dominate a person. This is a human love. Spiritual love is bestowed by Christ. It serves him alone. It knows that it does not have direct access to other people. Christ stands as a center. He stands between each person. He should be as a center of our relationship. Human love lives in uncontrollable desires. Uncontrollable desires. Spiritual love lives in the clar clarity of service prescribed by truth. And human love entails human enslavement. And spiritual love gives rise to the freedom of brother and sister under the influence of the word of God. Human love gives rise of artificially and spiritual love produces a healthy fruit. This is what we have for today, my friend. And I would like to conclude. So, what is the nature of spiritual community? The church 
is a spiritual community founded by Jesus Christ, on Christ, and which exists thanks to Christ and only in Him. Only in Jesus Christ it finds meaning, my friends. Our gathering today without Jesus Christ does not have meaning. Just in Him. And that is why or what makes us special and unique in this world. Unity in Jesus Christ. You know, roses, yes, or the rose is extraordinary flower. Yes? Many people love it. Many people love it, especially the girls, yes, <laughs> who are bestowed with it. Looking at the rose, you have picture here, you have a uh, rose in my hand. We can discover the beauty of unity for ourselves. What we see, all the petals of flower is revealed precisely is connected to a stem. Yes? This is what we have. All petals. Oh, and the beauty of flower is revealed precisely in the unity and interconnection. Yes? However, having separated this from stem, what we have? the flower loses its beauty, yes? <laughs> Separated petals. The rose is no longer the same because the beauty is an abundance of petals. Apart from stem, roses loses its beauty and existence as a rose and will never be beauty and amaze us. Let's remember that the beauty of the church, the beauty of our community, lies in unity. Unity with each other and with Jesus Christ. The stem that unites us, which nourishes, gives us special shape. Each, one, each of us is like a petal in a rose. Each one is unique, but at the same time, the unity of petals is what makes us a whole rose. And may God and may Lord give us strength and desire to fulfill and live in this truth. The truth of spiritual unity based on Christ and Him alone. Amen? Our Father in heaven, we praise you and love you for, because you are our Savior. You saved us. You love us. You gave us a community. You blessed us to know each other. But sometimes, Lord, we have uh, troubles with each other, with our motivation, with our intentions, with our desire to dominate or control somebody. Please forgive us. And unite us. Please help us. To always remember about unity in you. And that you are foundation for our relationship. That you are mediator for our relationship. We pray, bless us as a church and be with us in Jesus Christ.